Greg Batten on the break as the group leaders do battle in match number four of six on the evening. Fantastic opening break from the Pac-Man. Struck these beautifully and has got a good chance to go 1-0 up. It, this now is a huge match for these two. They now know that if they win it, they knock two people out. And they know that they just need to cross over the line in the last match of the night. Plenty of offer in this one. Key shot in this frame as well. This goes in, the rest is sitting there. Could have made half a case for yellows. I know the one below the eight ball is looks tricky, but does go to the bottom left. But now that red's gone. Reds are by far the better colour set. You make a case here for coming back, dealing with the two at the bottom, one at the top, because you've got loads of room for the eight ball, but it's going to go the other way around. Thought he was a little bit straighter there, that if he just drops that in, then you go bottom left, bottom right, and the one at the top, because you middle of the table is easy to get to from the one at the top. But if he gets this positional shot right, it won't matter. Keeble's doing a little bit more travelling on the last two shots than he wants, though. Yeah, especially there when it's travelled a little bit too far, if anything. Should still be able to hold this. Yeah, it's the same deal, just get the cue ball to the middle of the table. This time two cushions, just pace control really. Just pace control. Oh, just. Oh, just. Never in doubt. One nil, Pac Man. All built on the back of that big break. That was very good. Takes care of his frame and then sort of says to Ian, over to you. That's all he can do, really, in this stage of the match. Ian just had to take his medicine. Now he gets a chance to get himself going. Sure, that's tough. Controlled that cue ball really well. Yeah, that was a beautifully hit break. Really was well hit this. Not a good leave though. It's not a particularly inviting chance for Greg Batten. I suppose yellows you can make a case for here. Well, I think you can see the ones to the top left, which or top right as we look at it from the overhead. It's just the yellow that he's next to. I'm just thinking about how's he dealing with that one. Can he get onto it into the right centre? Probably not. All the other yellows have have pockets. I think his next shot has to be very precise. Yeah, he's thinking with that cannon there, he's not thinking about being on that yellow when he plays the cannon. He, he's thinking if I catch the top side of this red and plays that cannon, then the, the cue ball finishes in the middle of the table and he's potentially on at least the one on the left-hand side cushion, but also maybe the one to the right of it as well. Just caught that red just a shade full. The one positive for Greg is I think he's touching ball, so he can play away here. He'll pop this red over the middle. 
and he won't leave him that much to go at. So much so, Ian is not even going to entertain the idea. Craig's having a look to see whether he can get to this one over the bottom right. You can definitely see the one on the left-hand side cushion, which isn't the worst option. Sort of float it in. If you make it, great. You win the frame. If you don't make it, there's at least still work out there for Ian. He was hoping that there'd be two lots of work, as in taking that shot on. He's thinking, we know that covering pockets in, in international eight ball rules isn't great, but if you cover a pocket there, then Ian's got a problem bottom left and the one on the right-hand side, and probably becomes a safety battle from there rather than leaving a chance to clear up. But he's definitely left Ian an opportunity to go here because of keeping that pocket open. still the problem when well, the other red's gone it's okay as a double and he could almost guarantee the double if he yeah like this floats it in straight in on this to the top right he can pick the angle he wants on the on the double the angle he's picked yeah has to play a cue ball here as well oh and has he played that really well lovely finish for me and Ali that really good really was made a very confident finish there. Set his plan out very early. Knew what he was doing with his bad ball and how he was going to leave himself a nice angle on it. And executed it perfectly. Very good indeed. Excellent stuff from the fave, who may well at this juncture be just that right at this moment. Greg Batten more than capable, though, of turning that around in the next 15 minutes or so. Yeah, well, no doubt about it. A winner of this match does become a big favourite for the night. As always, fourth match is key. Not as powerful this time as the previous break from Greg, but makes the ball all the same. And these yellows aren't bad. Yeah, the yellow running around the table at the end there has tied up the eight ball and that yellow, but a couple of ways of getting into it early and with control. The rest of the yellows are laid out really well. Semi-awkward. how thin the clip is on the one he's next to now into the center pocket can he screw get no screw on it to hold the cue ball or can he see the gap to the one below the eight ball and if he can it's perfect yeah i mean if he's, no, he's, he's on that he's, he's absolutely I was say he can't because of the way he was looking at other options but okay so the the ones by the eight ball are problems here 
Uh, we're not going to find out because he's not going to get that far. Yeah, tough finish. Not got. Pretty good leave, though. He's had a bit of a touch here. Left Ian next to nothing. Yeah, he can pop the one to the top right with really hampered queuing, but if you make that pot, you're on absolutely nothing. So essentially left him nothing. And hmm, find a safety here then, Ian. Yeah, this is really tough, actually. Probably count himself a little bit unlucky here, Ian Alley. He might try and pot this to then find the safety off the next one. Yeah, it may have been what he was trying to do. with Greg's last shot. We will never know what the the end game plan truly was for Ian Alley. And this frame just took on a whole load of importance all of a sudden. It's Greg Batten who's in the driving seat, at least for now. Has he gone a roll too far? That ball on the, the line was always awkward. Probably feels because these two yellows were so awkward to land on get rid of them even though he's leaving yellows at the top end of the table and eight ball at the bottom end of the table and a wall of reds as a guard actually makes this very tough still to get out even from here could have made a case for leaving the one he's just played as his last ball but you couldn't get a good angle on it to get nicely on the eight ball This is a good angle, but the window to hit is small. Oh, He's hit it, though. Yeah, I love the way he played that. He potted that thin so that he could play two cushions. If he pots that centre pocket, then the line is going much closer to the corner pocket. But potting it thin meant he could go two cushions, meant he was going into the reds rather than behind them. Lovely from Greg Batten. Very good indeed. Yeah, touch of fortune when he missed in the beginning of that frame. But an excellent clearance with a second chance. Another match where the, the match clock has suddenly just crept into play yeah, as well. I was just thinking that. We're very close to the 15 seconds a shot again, and we've had three, three of the frames. Yeah, quite a lot of our matches so far in the Champions League, and it admittedly is quite a small sample size still. But we've seen that sort of at number four crop up quite a bit. Less so tonight. It's gotten mixy. Oh, what do we say towards the end of the last match? Towards the end of these matches, when it gets mixy. You want two things. You want the lead and the break. Greg Batten has the lead. Ian Alley can't make his break work. So Batten's got the advantage there now too. He has, but he's probably got a layout here where he feels he's got to take them on. And they're not a good layout to go for here. If he takes on the reds and doesn't get them, he could make the yellows open. He's trying to work out what he can do. I don't like the red by the eight ball and the red bottom left, both awkward. So just turns the table over. Really clever from Greg. Slowing the match down with the lead. The player that goes for a finish with this layout is odds against, and he doesn't want to be the one to take that on. And you can't blame him.
Is he more tempted this time? If he can see the one nearest the right centre pocket, he might be able to play into the the clustered area, although there's yellows blocking it. And he set his stall out. Stay patient. Easy to say when the 15 second shot clock comes in, however, to stay patient. You know, he doesn't strike me as a particularly patient man. He's going to go. And I suspect Greg Batten sat in his chair, although he'll be a little nervous of the, yeah. the clearance here. He probably knows the percentage is with him right now. Big chance for this to go wrong. Well, that is excellent. Oh, that's such a good shot. Well, that's changed everything. It's not just making the pot to the corner. He's flicked it off the red. That was hard to do. And he's opened up the, the one by the eight ball. What a great bit of vision. And then oh. he misses. Wow, the shot before deserved the finish. It was so good. He, he's, he's got to hit the red so thin. If he hits the red thick, the, the red he's playing doesn't go in. It's such a good shot. He ha the, the only thing he can do is feather it. Greg dies in that yellow. And you see in Ali's hopes of qualification dying as well. That was in time. Just about. Oh, it's not landed nicely. It's going to have to be a plant. This isn't guaranteed. Oh, very good. Very good indeed. Helps with the two yellows together at the top. If the right hand one passes the left hand one, they both go independently of each other. That helps this finish quite a bit. That's not the best angle he's left himself to try and get up for them. Not a bad shot, though, he's just played. He would have loved to have been able to take one independently. I think he still can. Oh, that was tight. Yeah, he could. Amazing. It's a big shot, though. In his mind, though, it, this will be match ball. Yeah, and I think it will be. All the hard work done. Very good indeed by the Pac-Man. 3-1 in front. A little under two minutes to play. Greg Batten is starting to look very, very good for Group 5 of the Ultimate Pool Champions League. That frame's going to really hurt Ian Ali. The shot he played, it, it was so good to open everything up. It, honestly, that was a low percentage chance on, on Reds. And at one behind with the clock getting away, he had to take it on. But the shot he played was, was brilliant. It really was. And to miss the next pot, oh, it's going to really hurt him. And now he's going to need things to go his way, whether it's the next 1 minute 54 of this match or helping the, the next two matches. Eight ball on the move, but nothing else is going to find a home, and Ian Alley sprints to the table. This is a nice layout. OK, the one in the top half of the table, slightly awkward, but there's room. Everything goes. Ian Alley in a hurry. He's actually... Oh, he's definitely a little bit short. No, he's OK. He's just got about gone far enough. That's awkward, though, getting on the last yellow from this one. What I was thinking is if he could have left it low and played top left with this ball, would have made it easier. Oh, he's nipped that so well. That's <laughs> such a good shot. It didn't look like that shot was on. That was really good. What a clearance this is at pace from the fave. Right then. 
55 seconds left. Ian Alley has the break. And if he can find a clearance in those 55 minutes, we'll go to 3-3. Three, three. This night has got some serious legs in it just right now. Yeah, I think all four players' eyes will be on this next break from Ian Alley. Chris Hampson and Jack Whelan are right at this moment enormous Ian Alley fans. Greg Batten has been in this chair before. Yeah, and, and it's <laughs> it's not a comfortable one to be in. Yeah. And for those of you who remember, Dom Cooney produced an absolutely miracle finish against Greg Batten in similar circumstances. Did it in about half the time of 55 seconds as well. Greg Batten knows what this position is like to be in. It's not comfortable. Where's that eight ball? Oh, <laughs> I thought that eight ball was going to be close to the left centre then as it was coming down. But the dry break hurts him. Uh, Greg can it, steady himself now. The dry break doesn't just hurt him, it kills him in this scenario. And he knows it. He actually changed to the cut break. The first two breaks in this match were front ball, but they were both dry. So he changed to the cut break, partly because he was having no success from the front ball, but also it gets the eight ball in motion with it, which it absolutely did. And a golden break would have helped. Oh, Greg Batten can just pot out, and he is the most relieved man in the building right now. This result will knock out Chris Hampson and Jack Whelan. Ian Alley is still alive, but barely. Greg Batten is now odds-on favourite for a spot in the next round. The Pac-Man is flying high in the Champions League.